The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Adventure, There Was a Crooked Man. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Aboard the eastbound transport plane. I hope the next time they hold a newspaper convention, it'll be a little nearer home. At any rate, Britt, we're lucky to have been on the same plane. Hope you got as much out of your convention as I got out of my trip to Chicago. Oh, which reminds me, Conway, uh, why did you go to Chicago? Why? Well, when James Conway, a one-man grand jury investigating Graf, leaves for an airplane trip, that's news. That's what I'm afraid of. I'd as soon rather not have it known that I went to Chicago. Oh? Hope you won't publicize it. The simplest way to keep things out of the paper, Conway, is to confide in a newspaper man. If he thinks you're trying to hide something and put one over on him, you'll get answers and publish them. Frankly, then, I went there in connection with the graft problem. I assumed as much. There were a couple of men doing a term in Joliet. I had enough on them to make sure of another rap when they finished this one. So they were glad to talk to me. You uh, wouldn't resort to blackmail to get facts, would you? <laughs> Brett, in smashing this graft ring, I'd resort to practically anything. Bad as that. Worse than anyone realizes. Right here in this briefcase... I hold the data that will smash this ring. How about some advance information? Well, I might make a deal with you. Eh? You want information to get what you call a scoop for your paper. I'd like to have the Daily Sentinel be the first to announce what you will reveal. And you'll have your scoop. If. What's the if, Conway? If you let me have everything in your possession pertaining to the Green Hornet. What? The Green Hornet. But, Conway, uh, what makes you think the Daily Sentinel has anything about him? Perhaps you haven't. In that case, I'll get the worst of the bargain. On the other hand, perhaps you have. I'll have to rely entirely on your word of honor. I see. I'll promise you a scoop on my expose when I'm ready to break it. Provided you give me your word of honor to tell me all you know about the Green Hornet. Well, I... uh, My word of honor. Precisely. Let uh, let me think this proposition over, Conway. Think it over. Then you do know more about it than the police have announced. I'm not committing myself just yet. Oh, by the way, I must send a radiogram to the paper to have my pal meet me at the field. Well, that won't be necessary. My daughter Polly will be there. Oh, but I don't want... She'll have her car to meet me. We can drop you any place you say. Well, if it won't put you out, uh, you can drop me at my office. Not at all, Reed. Glad to. Meanwhile, at the airport, Ed Lowry of the Sentinel approached a sport roadster. Say, you're Polly Conway, right? What? Why, yes. My name's Lowry of the Sentinel. Waiting for the Chicago plane? Yes. By uh, any chance, are you waiting for your father? 
How did you know who I was? <laughs> Those low license plates are a dead giveaway, Miss Conway. Oh. Heard your old man... Uh, your father was digging up some facts in the Midwest. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't know. How soon is the plane due to land? Hmm. Half hour. Um, are you here to meet father, too? Me? No. No, I'm just here scouting for news. You know, sometimes big names come in on the planes. Oh. My boss was in Chicago, too. Wonder if you met your father there. Mr. Reed? Yeah, know him? Indeed, yes, very well. Say, that's one nasty mess we're having in this town, isn't it, Miss Conway? I, uh, wonder how your father's investigation is going. I'm sorry, Mr. Lowry, I... <laughs> if anyone can smash this grab ring, he's the man to do it. You really think so? He's told you about it, of course. Well, he... A couple dozen gambling houses running wide open with all kinds of protection. Cheap joints where they let a sucker play for a nickel and others where they let them do anything to limit, win or lose. Yeah, really, I... Oh, Miss Conway, he must have mentioned them to you. Well, if he has, I've paid little attention. The I... sheriff of the county attempts a raid once in a while, but there's always a tip-off. Is there? Yes. Yet the same sheriff completely smashes the joints that try to open in competition to Deke Slotkin. Say, what's your father said about Deke Slotkin? Now, there's a crook who's in solid. Wonder how much he pays for protection. If you're trying to get information out of me... me... <laughs> no, where'd you get that idea? I'll bet Deke Slotkin has tried to approach your father, hasn't he? Miss Conway? Oh, uh, yes. Wire just came to the office for you. Thank you. From your father? Oh, really, Mr. Lowry, it's none of your bit. Oh, Bad news? You missed the plane and we'll have to come by rail. I'm to meet up at the station later. I'll go with you. Oh, no, you won't. Wait, I'll tell you what. Let me check at the office and see the passenger list of that plane. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Lowry. It's nice to <clears throat> meet you. Now, lady, Wait. Gosh, what a girl. Oh, why do people have to turn right in the middle of the road? Can't you pull to the side and let me pass? Just a minute, lady. Oh, I didn't see. Put that gun down. What does this mean? Just keep your hands on the steering wheel, Miss Conway. There. I'm riding with you, and you go where I tell you. How dare you? Get out of my car. What's the meaning? take it easy, and you won't be hurt. Okay, boys. Pull to the side and let us by. You can't get away with this. Turn left at the next side road. Why, you... Do as I say. The next morning in the office of the Daily Sentinel... Holy mackerel, if this don't beat the Chinese. Hey, where's Gunnigan? What? Lunch. I thought a city editor lived on ink and paper. Lunch. With a story like this, he's eating. Gangway, I gotta see the boss. What's the matter with you, Lowry? Deep slapped and smacked the homer with the bases loaded. Good grief, Lowry. Easy on that door. Where's the boss? Where's Reed? What do you want him for? He's busy. Yeah? Well, tell him that Deke Slotkin's finally found enough cash to bribe James Conway. Watch yourself, Lowry. That's one of those things that calls for lots of proof. You said it, Casey. And what I'd give to be the guy to prove it. What's the matter, Lowry? Get a load of this, boss. Conway reports that he couldn't find a thing against Deke Slotkin, the sheriff, or anyone else in the gambling ring. What? Here's a statement. It just came in. Oh, but that's impossible. It's a lot of bunk. He had plenty of stuff before he went to Chicago. How do you know he went to Chicago? Don't ask me. I know, that's all. Well, that trip was kept secret. A guy in Conway's spot conducting a grand jury investigation don't have any secrets. Besides, I was at the airport yesterday. His daughter Polly was there. Oh, she was? Yeah, I tried to get some information from her, but <laughs> she was too smart. She wasn't there when the plane landed. No, her father didn't come by plane. She got a wire to meet him at the central station. He came by train. Hey, wait a minute, Laura. Let's get this straight. You say Conway wired that he'd not be on that plane? Sure, then his daughter drove away. And you say that he did have enough charges against the Slotkin crowd before he went to Chicago? Yeah, and he must have got something in Chicago. Now he comes back and says he has no evidence. Hands in a report that the sheriff and his stooges are perfectly okay. Says Deke Slotkin is on the level. And we know darn well this county reeks with grass. But Lowry. Yeah? James Conway was on that plane. He was? Well, certainly. I talked with him all the way from Chicago. Then why did he send that wire? Why didn't he have his daughter stay there? Miss Case, get Conway on the phone. Very well. If he isn't at his office, try his home. If he's not there, try the Civic Club. Right. Laura, you get on the trail of Deke Slotkin. Me? Right. Yeah, James have Slate cover the sheriff's office. Get Parker and Milray and have them cover some of Slotkin's joints tonight and see how they're doing. They'll know whether or not the gambling is running full blast. And if it is? Well, no Slotkin's mob feels perfectly safe. I get it. The last two weeks, they've had a soft pedal on. Get going. Don't worry. I'm on my way. Oh, oh. oh sorry, buddy. I didn't see you come. 
James Conway. Conway, the very man I want to see. Come in. Oh, I was just calling Say, you. Say, Mr. Conway, I want to talk to you. On your way, Lowry. This doesn't change instructions as far as you're concerned. Oh, how do you... Britt, I want to speak to you. There's no one I'd sooner see. Privately, if you please. Oh, come on in my office. Miss Case, if those other men Lowry's going to call for me should come in for orders, have them wait. Yes, Mr. Reed. There we are. Sit down, Conway. One of my reporters uh, brought in some news about you. Yes, yes, I know they did. All the papers have it. I couldn't do anything else. I had to issue that statement. That you made no findings whatever against the gambling craft? Yes, Reed, I... I had no choice. What's uh, behind this, Conway? Reed, there's just one man who knows I did have information. Oh, I knew it. You told me as much on the plane yesterday. That's why I'm here today. To ask, to beg you, Reed, to forget everything I said yesterday. Why? Please, please don't ask any questions. Will you do as I ask? That's a large order, Conway. I know. You told me yesterday you were ready to smash the gambling ring in this county. You said you got enough information in Chicago to expose the sheriff and his crooked deputies. You guaranteed to prove that Deke Slotkin could run his gambling houses wide open because he was paying plenty for protection. I know. I wish I'd bitten my tongue off before I said that. Uh, What's happened since then? I can't tell you. I can't tell anyone. Conway... I told you yesterday that you could trust a newspaper man. This is different. I also told you that if you tried to put one over on a newspaper man, he'd go a long way to get to the bottom of things. I I know, Reed. But this... Well, you can't get to the bottom of this. Where's your daughter, Conway? Uh, What? You heard me. Where's your daughter, Polly? Why, uh, she... uh, That is, she's out of town. Are you sure she's out of town? What are you driving at, Reed? Just this, Conway. Your daughter went to meet you at the airport yesterday. Someone sent her a telegram. She drove away from the airport. Has anyone seen her since then? Good Lord, how do you know these things? Has she been taken by Slotkin's mob? Reed, I... Are they holding her? Do they demand that you surrender all the evidence against them as the price for her safety? You... You seem to know. Conway, uh, What are you going to do about it? I have no choice, Reed. Are you going to let a gang of crooks get away with... Reed, for 20 years I've served the public. Worked for the interests of the people. When Matterling ran for the office of sheriff, I fought against his election. He was elected through no fault of mine. You needn't tell me, Conway. I fought with you. As soon as Matterling took office, he started this tie-up with Slotkin. To correct the mistake the voters made, I kept after him. I did have a case against him. I meant to expose him. But now I can't read. I'll give everything I've got in public service, except my daughter. No matter how much I may want to expose this gambling ring, my daughter's safety comes first. Even though you know who captured her, you can't do anything about it. How can I? Any one of dozens of underworld rats could have handled this abduction. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. And there's no way to force those behind it to admit their connections. How are you advised what to do? They called me on the phone. Have you destroyed the evidence? No. Handed it over to them? I I will do so. But you haven't done it yet. I I can't say any more, Britt. I came here simply to ask you to forget what I said yesterday. Where is that evidence now? Britt, I can't say any more. Will you do what I've asked? You may count on me, Conway. I knew I could. Later, in Britt Reed's apartment, the young publisher spoke to Cato, his faithful valet, and the only living person to know him as the Green Hornet. Cato, we're going out tonight. We're going to see what we can do. Very well, Mr. Brett. I wondered, Cato, just how I could give Conway all the information I had about the Green Hornet. No, you're not have to. No, Cato, I won't have to. His daughter's disappearance makes it unnecessary to keep that bargain with Conway. Still, I'd almost prefer telling him the whole story if it were the only way to smash this gambling ring. Mr. Conway's a smart man. Conway's very smart, Cato. He's told no one else about his daughter's abduction. I'm the only one. Then you must be careful, sir. You're right. If the Hornet should show a knowledge of his daughter's abduction, Conway will know Britt Reed is the Green Hornet. Unless... Unless what, Mr. Reed? Unless Conway is made to believe that the Green Hornet is one of the abductors. Come, Cato. The mask and the weapon. Tonight, Conway is going to meet the Green Hornet. (laughs) The curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. To continue our story, the only way Britt Reed could offer aid as the Green Hornet without making James Conway suspect his true identity was to pose as a member of the gang that had kidnapped Conway's daughter. With this as his plan, he guided the sleek black beauty to the court outside Conway's study. Wait here in the car, Cato. Yes, Mr. Britt. I'll go through that French window. Conway's in his study. Farewell. Back right inside. Mass. In Conway. We'll talk inside the study. The, the Green Hornet. I guess you know why I'm here, don't you? I I can imagine. Why? You and those other rats are after the portfolio. Well, where is it? I thought there'd be a phone call. I've been waiting for it. I'm here. There's no need for the phone call. But if I give you what you want, how do I know my daughter will return safely? You'll have to take your chances on that. If she's seen any of you, you, you might not let her go free to testify. She certainly won't go free if you don't stop stalling. Hand over those affidavits. But Be I, quick about it. I, yes, I, I have them. I'll get them. Now you, put your hands up. Why you? Hurry. Raise your hands or I'll blast you into eternity. More nerve than I gave you credit for, Conway. Take off that mask. Conway, do you know what this will mean to your daughter? I know that I'm about to learn the identity of the Green Hornet. After that, I'll dictate the terms. You send my daughter back, not to save the gambling ring but to protect yourself. My silence in exchange for my daughter's life. Don't be a fool, Conway. You can't help your daughter this way. Take off that mask. I... <coughs> Take it. I... Something's wrong. My throat. Oh. Too bad, Conway. You forgot I might have an assistant. I saw him. Shot gas in the window just in time. Now get in here quickly. We've got to find those papers. They must be in here somewhere. He was waiting for a phone call from the gang. We'd better hurry. He started for this drawer. Perhaps... Yeah, here's a portfolio. Is that the one? Yes. Yes. Well, this evidence is enough to send Sheriff Matterling, three of his deputies, and the entire gambling ring to jail for life. He had them, eh? And on top of that, they have a kidnapping charge to face. Huh. Conway said he was waiting for a phone call. Yes, sir? It was to tell him how to go about exchanging these papers for his daughter... Well, we'll stay right here and take that call. In a large suburban home where Polly Conway was held captive, Deke Slotkin made his phone call. The girl... Well, Conway, you'll just have to take our word for it that she's safe. Yes. Yes, of course you can talk to her. Bring the dame over here. Go ahead, sister. Talk into that phone. Oh, you cowardly... Never mind the names. Your father's on the other end of this phone. Say something. Dad, don't pay any attention to them. That's enough. Don't listen to them, Dad. Come on, come on. You heard the boss. Hello, Conway. Don't try to trace this call, because we ain't calling from the place you'll find us at when you bring the stuff, see? Matter of fact, I'll tell you where we're calling from. 
It's your own house in the country. <laughs> All right, you mugs. Take the girl out to the car. Get her to the next place. I told Conway to meet us there. You think he'll bring the stuff with him? Sure he will. Sure. You'll be sorry for this. My father won't let you get away with it. Take her out and get started. We'll come in the car. Come on. Let's get going. Gee. Yes, Steve? The dame's seen us all. We don't dare let her go. No? She'll squawk. She'll send us all to the gaol for life. Who said anything about letting her go? On the other hand, if we don't let her go, Conway knows who'll be doing her in. It's all worked out, Steve. We got the girl's car parked at the 7-Eleven club. Yeah? Conway comes there with the evidence and leaves with the girl. Sure, but... On the way back to town, they cross the Battlestone Bridge. And that's where they have an accident. And get this, Steve. You know how it's going to look like this accident happened? I'm listening. It's going to look like you come out here with his daughter. They had a couple of drinks. A couple too many, get it? And Conway's too tight to drive his car, so he goes off the bridge. Boy, that's a lulu. Yeah, and six of you guys will swear the girl was at the club. Come on, now. we got to get to the 7-Eleven club before Conway does. Tell the boys to watch for his car in the parking lot. Right. Conway is one guy that couldn't be reached with cash. Well, we'll reach him this way. Permanently, Steve. Permanently. When James Conway recovered consciousness... Uh, what? The hornet. The green hornet. Uh, gas. I remember. Gas. Knocked me out. <laughs> Weak as a kitten. I hear the desk drawer. The papers. Papers gone. The hornet. Oh, yeah. The phone. I'll show him. He, he can't bluff me. Hello. Give me police headquarters. Hmm. What's, what's this? Drop something. Address. Good Lord. Hello. Police headquarters. James Conway speaking. I just found a clue to the Green Hornet. Yes. Send Sergeant Doyle here with men he can pick out and trust. I know he's on the level. Warrant nothing. We're going to raid the 7-Eleven and do it without a tip-off. We don't need warrants where the Green Hornet is concerned. <laughs> these papers tell all about the 7-Eleven Club. How there's a secret entrance to Deke Slotkin's office. How much is required for protection? That is good. If only Conway is the fighter he proved to be when I was in his home. If he is not, Mr. Bed. If he isn't, Cato, I don't know what will happen. It might mean the end of the Green Hornet. Our luck must make James Conway realize what the note I dropped in his office meant. It must give him added courage enough to act on it. More, Mr. Bed. More? What do you mean, more? You must get out of the club. Yes, that's a problem, Cato. Once inside the 7-Eleven Club, how am I going to get out? There's a club just ahead. Now to find that secret entrance. According to the information in the portfolio, that entrance to Deke Slotkin's office must be through that little woodshed. Yes, Mr. Bate. Well, that's the way I'm going in. Take the car, Cato, and leave me here. But, Mr. Bate, how do you get away? I don't know yet, Cato, but don't bother about me. You get this car back to the hiding place. There's nothing more you can do. Conway, her hands still tied, was in Slotkin's office. Better put a gag on it, too, Steve. Okay, boss. Whatever you say. Yes, you'd better, you pack of yellow rats. Four of you here, and you're afraid of one girl. Shut up. Take it easy. Get a gag in her mouth and get outside. Watch for Conway's car. Who's it? I wouldn't know, boss. Who knows about the secret door to this place? You got me, Dick. Must be one of the bunch. The only one of the bunch that knows about that isn't here. He's in stir in Chicago. Maybe he's out. No, he isn't out. If he was, we'd have heard of it before this. Say, do you suppose Conway knows about that? Maybe he does. Should I open it? Yeah, open it up. All of you, stand where you are. Hey, what's that? The Hornet. What the Samuel? Move back in there. Hey, what's all that smoke behind you? The tunnel behind me has been filled with gas. You better close that panel if you don't want it to come into this office. I'll close it. What's a big idea? Who sent you? I'm here representing Conway. Close that panel. That means no one will leave by this exit, Slotkin. Did Conway send you here? What do you think? 
I'm here to take the girl and leave these papers. Hold on. That stuff don't go, understand? Oh, you figure on stopping me, Schlotkin? Now, Hornet, put down the rod. We can get together. Untie that girl. Hurry it up. I'm taking her out of here with me. And just how do you figure on getting her out, Hornet? You think you can walk right through that crowd in the gambling rooms here with a hornet mask gun without nobody stopping I you? I said I'm tired. Guess again, fellow. I'll shake it down. Gas. If anyone else wants some gas, just make a play for a gun. You're going to untie that girl and we'll have to gas the bunch of you and do it myself. Take the ropes off her, Steve. He can't get out of here. Okay. Conway thought you wouldn't be dependent on to keep your word. He kept his. See, here are the papers. All the evidence he got against you. Yeah, let me look at him. Now remove that gag. All right, all right. I'm doing it. <laughs> I suppose you think you're smart finding that secret entrance. Well, let me tell you, Hornet, you haven't a chance in the world of getting out of here. That's the cops. The signal. It's a raid. We didn't get a tip. Don't bother us that door. We got a scram. Help, help. Boss, the dame. Them papers, if they catch us... They will find you here. See how you like this gas. There's enough in that bomb to fill the room, and here's some more. Now to get out of here. Order. There's a room there. Come on, men. Lockin' private officers this way. I'm right with you, Conway. Get back there. Here's one raid you weren't kicked off. Here's the office. The door is open. Conway, why didn't you tell me we were going to raid the Hey, you here? It looks that way, huh? Holy smoke, boss. But, well, you can't be here finding a raid. I was after information. Stay with us, Reed. My daughter is here somewhere. The Hornet's here, too. The Hornet? Yeah, he tried to threaten Conway. He's in with the gang. You stick with us, boss. Make out you made the raid along with us. Oh, there's my daughter. Polly. Polly, are you all right? This room's filled with gas. Careful how you enter it. What's this stuff? My evidence. The things the Hornets told. It's Ferber, Slotkin, and a couple of others. They're out cold. Polly, Polly, speak to me. Are you all right? I'm sure she's not harmed, Mr. Conway. The gas the Hornet uses is not dangerous. Mr. Reed, this will smash the ring. Look at the stuff that's here. I know. Uh, you know? Well, uh, uh, Conway told me about it. I think, Conway, that now the Sentinel has a story. The Sentinel has... I wonder which of these four men is the Green Hornet. I doubt if any of them is. You seem to know a lot about the Green Hornet. You said the gas was not dangerous. You claim none of these is the Hornet. I uh, happen to know quite a bit about the Green Hornet. In, in my position with the Sentinel, I, I've been well informed about him. That's right, Conway. There's only one guy that knows more about the Green Hornet than Britt Reed does. And that's the Green Hornet himself. <laughs> Copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated.